debuting on Sky 4. Tonight, it's the home opener for the 1-1 one one Hampton Pirates wearing those white home jerseys. Take it on their in-state rivals from Williamsburg, the William & Mary Tribe. And you may have noticed by now, if you've caught any college basketball all over the country, there are no fans inside the arena tonight thanks to COVID-19. So these players are going to have to bring their own energy. The William & Mary Tribe, 1-1 one one on the year after a, an amazing come-from-behind win over George Washington on the road. Their first win over GW in D.C. since 1967. The New York Pirates on their home floor for the first time this season after a season opening win also at GW, followed by losses at Norfolk State and VMI on Sunday. The game officials tonight, Tony Henderson, Anthony Franklin, Ryan Sassano, Balls at midcourt, and we are underway here at the Hampton University Convocation Center. Your starters for the Hampton Pirates now on offense, Marquise Godwin, Russell Deuce Dean, Davion Warren, Dejour Dickens, Chris Shelton. We'll be talking about all these players as the game goes on. My name is Nathan Epstein, normally on Wavy TV 10 here in Hampton Roads, joined by Matthew White. Thanks, Nathan. It should be an exciting start here. As down low, the easy flush. For the ODU transfer, DeJour gets on the board here early for the Pirates. DeJour Dickens, a big seven-footer. He spent a lot of time with Old Dominion. Had to sit out last year because of that transfer rule and got his first start just the other night. Underneath, no good. The tip, no good. That was Ben Wright for the Tribe trying to get the bucket. No good, and the Pirates retain possession. You see the size there from DeJour, able to affect the shot. Didn't get the block, but with that long reach, was able to tip the rebound to himself, and the Pirates look to add to what's a 2-0 lead. And underneath they go right back to Dickens again. So far, four points. All of them to the Pirates and all of them for Mr. Dickens. Yeah, Dickens, a local Hampton product out of Bethel High School, uh, along with his teammate in Godwin from Hampton High. So two local products here for the Pirates trying to get their second win of the season here as the Tribe put one in. That's Blair on the floater. Quinn Blair on the floater. And Quinn Blair, the junior out of Livania, Michigan, averages 11 points a game, shoots right around 50% from the floor, and that'll explain why when you get that close to the bucket. Here's Godwin back underneath Davion Warren. This has been the Mr. Everything for the Pirates, and now Dickens will try the long range, in and out, no good. Rebound comes to the Tribe, looking here in the early offense. Pirates showing man-to-man -man penetration all the way to the bucket, and the layup is up and good. That's Covington. Yuri Covington from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, the freshman guard. Covington, one of those two guards that Hampton is going to have to keep their eyes on tonight. Covington along uh, with another guard that we're going to get to in a minute, Luke Lowy. He's a senior and a turnover. Brings the ball back to the Tribe. Now, these two teams, Matt, very, very similar in a sense that they have had to deal with a lot of COVID-19 as many of the teams around the country have. The Tribe opened up their season at Old Dominion. They lost that game and immediately the next day found out that they had a COVID positive within their program, had to sit out for the next 16 days. Yeah, this actually, uh, Nathan, should have been the second matchup of these two teams, again, due to the uh, effects of the coronavirus. William and Mary and Hampton had agreed to a home and away here in the, uh, this season. But as you mentioned, after the game uh, against Old Dominion, William and Mary had to postpone or cancel their matchups at NC State, hosting Hampton at Norfolk State, and then at UVA so uh, this game originally was supposed to take place yesterday but the two coaches discussed and to help William and Mary out to give them some more time to practice coming off of the uh, shutdown they moved the game to today and here we are. Dejour Dickens tried his luck from about the same spot as his last miss no good and now try back on offense Quinn Blair with it. Thornton Scott back out to Blair. Blair the penetration and he gets the friendly roll. spoke to head coach Dane Fisher of the Tribe now in his second season last year was named the Tribe or the CAA coach of the year said he tried to keep some sense of normalcy the team met virtually a couple of times they tried to keep some sense of structure throughout the day Shelton connects from the elbow for the Pirates long two there for Shelton he's been a young man who stepped up here for the team last year didn't get a lot of playing time Nathan but so far with the expanded role with the matriculation 
of a Jermaine Merrow, an opportunity here for Shelton to make an impact. Scott rises and drains a three, almost from NBA range. And the Tribe take a 9-6 to six lead. These two teams love to do that. They love to shoot the ball from the outside, both the Pirates and the Tribe. And so far, William and Mary with a 9-6 to six lead. Godwin, another guy who can shoot it, tries his luck just from inside the three-point range, cannot find the range, and here come the Tribe. Scott back to Covington, and Covington, one of those youngsters that Coach Fisher was talking about, has a lot of slashing ability, gives it outside, and that's Blair, back-to-back -back threes for the Tribe, and they have a six-point edge. Just like that. The Tribe doubled the lead, 12 to 6 here. Hand down, man down. Got to know where the shooters are at all times here for William and Mary. 33% shooter. Godwin open again. This time he cans it. As Got we said before, Godwin, a product out of Hampton High just down the road here. Good to see him getting going here early, uh, his first start of the season. Godwin showed a little bit of what he can do in that last game. Here come the Tribe underneath. Blocked by Dickens, and that is something that Coach Ed Buck Joyner is hoping he can see a lot more of. We've reached our first timeout, and we've seen a lot of scoring so far, Matt. 12 to 8, William and Mary leads it at the Hampton Communication Center. Just under 16 minutes to play past the first media timeout, and William and Mary leads this one 12 to 8 over the home Pirates, making their or playing their first home game of the season. Again, Matt, two teams that really are facing a lot of the same challenges. You have William and Mary, a team that is extremely youthful, trying to mesh together, playing their first season without the dominant Nathan Knight, who has signed a two-way deal with the Atlanta Hawks in the offseason. And then you have the Hampton Pirates playing their first season without the all-time leading scorer in school history, Jermaine Merrow. A lot of two, a, a lot of pieces to still try to piece together for both teams, and here they are trying to work things out on this Wednesday night. Underneath an interesting layup attempt by Luke Lowy. We're going to talk about him, the senior for the Tribe. No good, and here come the Pirates. Oliver Hampton checked in during the break. He's had a great start to this early season shot. No good from Hampton, and here come the Tribe. Conoco Chera with the ball. He was a game time decision tonight. Dealt with a non COVID illness. Did not play in the Tribe's win over George Washington just a few days ago. Game time decision. Looks like he is ready to go. Number 23 on the right side. And now back out. Thatcher Stone, a lot of contact as he gave the ball up. Thornton Scott with it. And the foul will go to Davion Warren. And that's his first, team second. But as you mentioned before, Nathan. Hampton, a team that lost not just Jermaine Merrill, but Ben Stanley, looking to transfer. So Hampton losing two of the top ten scorers in the nation last year. And with the other uh, graduates, lost 78% of their total output last year scoring-wise. So a lot of uh, familiar faces if you're a Pirate fan, but uh, guys getting more opportunities than they've seen before. Missed by Conica Chera ends up in the hands of Mikael Harvey. And he gets the bucket for the Tribe. Harvey, the sophomore from Huntington Beach, California. And Hampton trying to answer. Godwin gets open on the pump fake. Jumper is good. That's something that Coach Joyner said he wanted to see a lot more of from the youngster from Hampton. Marquise Godwin, really more of a catch and shoot guard, he said, while he was at Old Dominion, sat out all of last year. And here he is making his debut inside this arena. Luke Lowy finds the opening from three and it's all nylon. Third made three point basket for the Tribe. Warren looking to get right back and they're gonna have an offensive foul here. As Warren, I believe, picked up his second here on that drive. So the Tribe with a 17 to 10 lead will retain possession. Luke Lowy made the last bucket for the Tribe. Three pointer, the 6-4 senior from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Interesting dynamic between Lowy and his head coach. Luke Lowy, a avid fan of the Green Bay Packers, his head coach, fan of the Minnesota Vikings. So he said every now and then, there's a little bit of chatter going on in practice, but all in good fun. Checking in for the Pirates, Ramon Bathea Jr., transfer from Howard University. So another new face here for the Pirates as the Tribe turned the ball over. 
Scott looking for Harvey underneath. The Pirates going with a bit of a zone defense there, Matt. And Harvey looked like he found the opening, but the pass too high. Edward Oliver Hampton there for the Pirates, wearing number 55. Interestingly enough, he wears 45 when he's on the road, 55 when he's at home. Deuce will set up Oliver Hampton. 13 seconds on the shot clock for the Pirates here, trailing by seven. Shelton, long three, and it's good. Shelton shoots 43% from beyond the arc. And he showed why he is dangerous. You got to keep your eyes on him. But even with a hand in his face, able to rise up and nail it. Louis looking to respond. Yes. It's turning into a three-point shootout here at the Convocation Center. Lead up to seven for the Tribe. Elbow jumper, back iron, no good for Oliver Hampton. And here come the Tribe. Scott with the rebound, and now we'll set things up for the Tribe. Again, you see the Pirates going with that zone defense. Approaching the 12 minute mark here, Louis looking for another one. Hot hand for Louis, has the three fingers up and the Tribe have a double digit lead for the first time tonight, 23 to 13. Luke Louis, the senior, the CAA's leading assist man, the third leading scorer in the conference, showing what's making him so dangerous early on in this one. Back out to Godwin, Scott is the one defending. Five seconds on the shot clock, they gotta move. Two seconds left, it doesn't look like they're gonna get a shot off, they will not. Excellent defense from the Tribe, turns it back over. The Tribe in the middle of a great run here. They have the 10 point lead, 23 to 13, second media timeout. to figure out how to make this place better. You can't let this beat you. William and Mary on a 17 to seven run. They have the 23 to 13 lead inside the Hampton Convocation Center and with possession of the ball. The man with the ball in his hands just gave it up. Luke Louis has the hot hand, has nine points, lead all scorers. Three three-pointers in the last several minutes. Make and, it four. And there's another one, Connor Cochera. The freshman from Arlington Heights getting his name on the board. Cochera named the CAA Rookie of the Week after putting in 23 points in the team season opener at Old Dominion. Marquise Godwin, look out for him. He's starting to feel it a little bit just inside of the arc. Gets the Pirates to within 11, 26 to 15. William and Mary right now shooting 71% from the floor, 10 of 14 before that missed layup, but the putback up and good for the trap. Ben Wright, the redshirt freshman, Coach Dane Fisher talked glowingly about him 
Said he's one of those guys that may not have all the physical attributes, but he is a guy that goes to work every single day, works hard, and had to go up against two of the best players in the country in practice last year. And there is right on the rebound, right place. Yuri Covington looking for the screen. Nice spin move, the reverse layup, give it to him. Yuri Covington, one of these two dynamic players for head coach Dane Fisher now in his second season. The Tribe projected to finish dead last in the CAA, but all Coach Fisher said he wants to do, maximize the talent he has on this team. Playing excellent defense, they have forced the Pirates into another turnover. Looks like a illegal screen set by Danny Bannister, the sophomore out of Chesapeake, will send things the other way. Pirates fourth in the conference so far. And by the way, we want to say take some of these uh, statistics with a grain of salt given the fact that we've seen so much craziness through the early parts of the season. Teams canceling all over the place. Covington cans it from three. Another three-point shot for William and May. Right now, seven of seven are the Tribe. Pirates going to look to answer back here. Seven points also for Covington. Dejour Dickens trying to track down the offensive board. Out of bounds, it will stay with the Pirates. There's some excellent hustle by Dickens there. Keeping it with his team, the junior center. Again, the transfer from Old Dominion. Shows a lot of potential. Had a great game last time out against VMI. It was a loss on the road. Steal here for William & Mary. Fast break, good hustle. Dean able to defend the ball out of bounds. Will remain with William & Mary. That was Covington on the steal. His third steal of the season, very, very quick freshman. Substitutions coming for head coach Joyner. Edward Oliver Hampton will head to the bench, and Chris Shelton will head back into the game. Has five points on the night, has a three-pointer already, and now the Tribe back on offense with a 33-15 to lead. Hot are the Tribe shooting tonight. Jake Milk right into the game for the first time tonight, gives it back out Scott. Looking for another three, it's Milkwright trying to get on the board, no good, rims around, in and out. Godwin on the rebound. Approaching nine minutes to play, Marquise Godwin. That one off from the start, rebound on the floor, there's a whistle, ball on the floor, it looks like it's gonna stay here with the, the Pirates, Matt. 9 on 6 to go, 33 to 15 to score. Foul will be charged to Ben White, his second, team second. So on one hand, Matt, William & Mary is sticking to the script. They are leading the CAA, averaging 81 points a night, sticking well to that, but they also allow the most points in the conference, 85 points a game through two of their matchups. But so far, the Tribe playing excellent defense. The Pirates having a bit of a trouble getting on the board. And another steal, here come the Tribe. Thornton Scott, contact. Bryce Earl telegraphed the pass. So let's talk about this William & Mary team. One and one on the year. They came back from 19 points down to beat George Washington on the road in D.C. Again, their first win in the nation's capital since 1967. Now that was their first game, Matt, in 16 nights. They played their opener against Old Dominion and then because of a COVID positive within their program, had to quarantine for 10 days. They were scheduled to play UVA a Sunday on Sunday but because of COVID problems within UVA's program, that game was postponed. And so William and Mary just trying to make do with what they had. Yeah, this has been a season for everyone where you just have to be extremely flexible. Pirates lost a handful of games, as we mentioned before. What would have been their home opener here against Regent University a week or so ago. And as we said before, these two teams were supposed to have played in Williamsburg. But fortunate just to be able to play here today. Pirates trying to cut into this deficit and have to do a better job of taking care of the basketball. And the Tribe flipping the script. Warren a little bit too long from the baseline back into the game. The Tribe actually trailed in their first two games by at least 15 in both games. And this time they have a 20-point lead. Seems like everything going down for William & Mary leading 35-15. to 15. Ball out of bounds will stay with the Tribe. Scott will do the inbounding. Thornton Scott with five points tonight. Underneath, Blair, too easy. Too easy. Quinn Blair has just stepped right in front of the defender on the inbounds. Lip is good, 37 to 15. 
here as we near the eight minute mark here in the first half. This young Hampton team trying to mesh without Ben Stanley as the jumper no good by Deuce Russell Dean. And this Hampton Pirates team looking to live life without the all-time leading scorer in, well, in Hampton history. That would be Jermaine Merrow, another hometown product from Heritage High School. We're going to talk more about him on the other side of our third media timeout of the night. 37 to 15, a commanding lead for William & Mary here on ESPN+. Sentara knows that for an ever-changing community like ours, your healthcare system shouldn't just keep up. We begin. Back at Hampton University, William & Mary with a commanding 37-15 lead. Nathan Epstein, normally of Wavy TV 10, here joined by Matt White. And Matt, Hampton really not shooting all that poorly. They're shooting 50% from three-point range, 41% from the field. But William & Mary, Quinn Blair at the free throw line, two shots after a miss but a foul. The first one rolls in. William & Mary shooting a blistering 66% from the field. And get this. 87% from three-point range. Seven of eight from the night for the night. And really, if you're Ed Joyner, you're just looking for a way to slow down this hot, this hot shooting of William and Mary. And to top it off now, four of four from the free throw line of the tribe. 39 to 15. Hampton has a lot of work to do. And it's going to start on the defensive end. But right now, Pirates need to get a good possession. Shelton left open, whistle away from the ball, and I believe a foul called on the Tribe here. Shelton had a pretty good look at it. He has been the go-to guy so far for Coach Joyner. It's gonna be on Blair, his first 13 foul on the Tribe. Five points for Shelton, and now he'll do the inbounding. Coach Joyner said once this team starts to mesh, once they get a little bit of chemistry going, no team in the country really has been able to practice the way they want. Dickens open from the elbow, no good. Sc Thornton Scott the rebound. He's been all over the place tonight. Once this team gets a little bit of chemistry going, they'll be scary, he said. Open look for three is no good. Warren with the rebound. Transition opportunity for the Pirates. Warren, free throw, pull up jumper, short, no good. Rebound f controlled by Hampton. Fresh 20 shot clock here on the reset. And here's Davion Warren again. Warren said earlier about playing with no fans in this building. It's different, but it's kind of cool. Has to find his own energy. He said he loves playing basketball, and you find out with no fans in the arenas who really loves this game and who's in it to play for the fans. Other end, Luke Louis runs right into Edward Oliver Hampton. Excellent defense by Hampton as Louis dragged that pivot foot, and he's called for the walk. Yeah, good defense there. Oliver Hampton got his feet set, stayed strong. I'm sure the Pirates would have liked to have gotten the offensive foul, but a turnover nonetheless. 6.44 remaining Pirates trying to find some momentum here and getting a rare stop here defensively here, Nathan. Again, Wayman Mayer shooting now 64% from the floor. The Pirates playing without six of their top seven players from last year, four of their five starters. Oliver Hampton, nice floater from the baseline. Good to see Ed get on the scoreboard. He had uh, some uh, big scoring nights here at the start of the season for Hampton. Slow start here today. See if he can pick it up. And the Tribe, meanwhile, trying to adjust to life without Nathan Knight. Again, the third player that has signed an NBA contract from Lehman Mary over the past four years. But so far tonight, they don't seem like they've missed much of a beat. 
Thornton Scott, back out Louis. He had the hot hand a little while ago. Off the side of the rim, no good. Harvey the rebound, had it blocked. And nice defense from the Pirates. Dickens the rebound, other end. Here comes Deuce Dean, back out. Dickens, off the window, and one. Great decision there by Dean not to force it. Thought about throwing it ahead to Oliver Hampton, but was able to draw the defense in. Dean on the trail. Opportunity here for a three-point play for the Pirates. Najor Dickens, one of the top recruits from the area when he played at Bethel High School. Had a number of Division I looks. Initially signed with Providence, decommitted, and then ended up at Old Dominion before transferring out of there. The free throw well short, and the rebound down to Harvey. 20-point edge for William & Mary. They have been shooting it incredibly well all night. Louis, the senior, one of those dynamic players for Coach Fisher, and here's another one, Covington. And he drains the three. Covington, the lefty, now with 10 points on the night. Eight made three-point bucket for William & Mary. 42 to 19 the score. Pirates trying to find somewhere to go. And they'll go to Deuce. Might have gotten away with a walk into the lane. Doesn't matter. Gets the little floater to go after the spin move. They're going to need a lot more of that. A 21-point edge for William & Mary approaching five minutes to play in this first half. William & Mary looking for their second win of the season. Underneath, Harvey, strong move, blocked, but they're going to say whistle and a foul. Yep, Dickens tried to come from behind on the block. That time a lot of contact with the body. Strong sophomore, 6'9", 225 pounds from Huntington Beach, California. Showing he can play well on offense, but leads the country in blocked shots. Gets the first free throw to go. He blocked five against George Washington just the other night. Again, we say with so much movement around the country and so many games being canceled and so many things happening because of COVID-19, some of these stats you got to take with a grain of salt. Second free throw is up and good. His first two free throw attempts and his first two free throw makes on the season give William & Mary a 44-21 lead. Hampton looking for some kind of an answer. They'll go to Oliver Hampton. Raymond Bethea into the game for the Pirates. Godwin finds Dean with eight seconds on the shot clock. Dean going to have to create. Uses the screen. Throws it to Oliver Hampton. Pump fake shot blocked. It's going to remain Pirate ball, but three seconds remaining on the shot clock. Excellent pass there from Oliver Hampton. Almost wasn't expecting there. Bethea will hit the bench and Chris Shelton back into the game. Three seconds left on the shot clock. Underneath, Deuce Dean off the rim, no good. Shelton tracks it down. Back out Dean, left-handed layup. Blocked by the rim almost. Oliver Hampton muscles it back home. A second, third, and maybe even a fourth effort there for Hampton. Had some point-blank opportunities. Finally able to get one to go. Both teams started to trade jabs a little bit here, but... We'll see if it's a little too little too late for Hampton. Still a lot of time left in this game. Ball being knocked around. Godwin tried to save it. Crashes into his own bench. Out of bounds, they're going to say Hampton ball. We've reached our last media timeout of the half. The Pirates trying to chip away. William & Mary leads at 44-23. to You're watching college. The home team, Hampton Pirates, have a little bit of work to do if they want to get back in this one. 44 to 23, William & Mary, been shooting hot all night. Leads it, looking for back-to-back -back wins after rallying to beat George Washington on the road on Monday night. Your leading scorer for William & Mary, Quinn Blair, though he hasn't touched the stat sheet in a while. He has 11 points, followed by Yuri Covington and Luke Lowe. Lowe has nine points, all on three-point makes. Right now, difference in the game, Nathan. The three-point shot, 24 to three, the score just off of the eight of 11 three-point shooting and just one of two for Hampton. See if Dean can penetrate here and finish. And a strong finish by the guy they call Deuce, the sophomore guard, six foot five. 
from South Carolina, York Prep High School. If the Pirates hope to make a run, it's gonna have to start here on the defensive side of the ball. And that's not the way to do it with the easy layup there on the roll for Blair. And Blair, the leading scorer tonight now with 13 points. Ed Joyner said one of the team's biggest issues is just getting back into shape. They had to start practice a little bit later. Didn't start until November 21st. Got a few practices in, but still just trying to get back into playing shape. Back outside, Godwin. Looking for the screen from Oliver Hampton. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. They'll give it back to Dean. Back outside, Godwin from three. Air mails it and Harvey with the rebound. Yeah, good uh, chase down there by Scott. Made Godwin think about the shot before he let it go. And now we're going to offensive foul on the Tribes. Covington there leading with the off arm. Covington doing well on the offensive end tonight. Not enough, not well enough there. Has 10 points. Second behind Blair in scoring for the night. Hampton still looking for their first double-digit score as they take the 30-second timeout. William & Mary leads it 46 to 25. Yeah, right now, William & Mary shooting 59% from the floor, Nathan, at 16 of 27. Well, as we said before, 73% from behind the three-point line at 8 for 11 and 6 for 6 from the free-throw line. Pirates shooting a respectable 42.9%, but when... You're only one of three from the three-point line, and your opponents made eight. That's the difference in the ball game. Pirates only with one trip to the free throw line. They're 0 for 1. So Pirates uh, trail in the rebound 16 to 12. Really, you know, both teams are playing a pretty solid game. Largest lead for William & Mary was at 24. But it's just the three-point shooting for the Tribe has really separated these two teams here so far. And here comes Deustine for the Pirates. Oliver Hampton, 2.36 remaining in the half. William and Mary looks like they're switching to a bit of a matchup zone here. Godwin penetrates. Harvey with the block, but they're going to say too much contact, and that'll send Godwin back to the line. Godwin was a sharpshooter when he played for the Hampton Crabbers right down the road. And didn't quite work out at Old Dominion. Has never shared why he left Old Dominion, but says that he has really enjoyed it here with Hampton University trying to start something new. And he will try his luck from the free throw line off the front end of the rim, no good. Last foul was charged to Blair. That was his second, 16th foul on the Tribe. Checking in for William & Mary is the freshman out of Dallas, Mill Kirtlett. Second free throw, also no good for Godwin. First one was short, second one a little long, and now the Pirates going to apply some full court pressure here, trying to change something up, trying to slow down this hot shooting William and Mary team as Thornton Scott sets things up for the Tribe, approaching two minutes left to play. Low, he's had a hot hand. Outside, contact. Three-pointer was no good, but there was contact, and Jake Milkwright will go to the free throw line for three shots. That is not what Coach Joyner wanted to see as he sits on the sideline, kind of his chin in his hand, looking for answers. Yeah, believe that was the third personal charge to Daniel Bannister. Free throws here for the Tribe. First of free. Three free throws is up and good. Jake Milkwright, the freshman guard. We've been saying freshman a lot for this tribe team tonight. Six foot five, 200 pounds from Dallas, Texas. Only averages two and a half points so far through the first two games. He's got a chance to meet and exceed that average with this one <laughs> trip here, Nathan. Don't say that too often. <laughs> this tribe team has a lot, of, as we've seen tonight, Spoke to head coach Dane Fisher just a few days ago as the third free throw is up and good. Can't get the trifecta. Coach Fisher said there's a lot of players on his team that can shoot the ball. And you're looking at the stats tonight and going, yeah, no kidding. Najee Thomas checked in for Hampton as we're under the two-minute mark. Goblin looks to create off the dribble again. Contact, no call. Finds Dean. Dean drives to drop it off to Oliver Hampton. It wasn't pretty. Shot blocked. 
and good defense there by and that William was, and Mary. And that was Harvey leads the nation in blocks so far this year. Other end, milk right, no good, just a little short. Low with the offensive board, and the Tribe can reset. Now with 90 seconds in the half, it has been all Tribe so far tonight. 10 seconds on the shot clock for the Tribe. The pass down low, layup up, no good, but a foul on Najee Thomas of Hampton. Harvey, another one of those young players that has shown his potential, leads the CAA also in field goal percentage. And he's also one of the top rebounders in the conference so far as well, has really shown his potential. Trying to fill in some pretty big shoes. First free throw is up and no good for Nathan Knight, one of the all-time greats to ever come through the Tri program. And you see some defense there as Harvey went up for the layup no good but he gets one of two free throws to fall and William and Mary 24 points they lead it by with a minute 20 left in the half still regardless of what happens tonight Matt coach Joyner has said that he likes the makeup of this team they just need to find some chemistry and eventually he said this team can be scary Dean going baseline underneath Oliver Hampton has it rejected. Guess who? Harvey with the block. Other end thrown away by Oliver Hampton. And that will get some claps and some applause from his teammates. Harvey with another block tonight. Yeah, Oliver Hampton had a nice opportunity at a lay in there. I think he hesitated, didn't realize just how open he was. And that one dribble he took gave the defense enough time of William and Mary and Harvey to rotate and get the block and then just force the turnover. Low underneath has his shot blocked by Shelton. Three players for the Tribe have blocks tonight. Other end, Oliver Hampton had some space for a moment, finds Godwin from the corner, no good, and Harvey flies in for the rebound, the outlet low. Low, left-handed. Someone the strength absorbed the contact from Dean and was able to use the left hand to finish the layup. That's the first on Dean, 10th team foul. But with the made layup, it will be a free throw opportunity here for Lowe. And, and Lowe now with 11 points tonight, trying to make it 12. Just behind Quinn Blair for the lead in scoring tonight. Daily Press, the local paper around here, actually did a story, did a feature on Luke Lowe, said that he can see himself being a pro bass fisherman at some point during his life. Hmm. Coach Fisher said he's a very low-key guy, can spend all day on the lake and be completely content. Bet you he's pretty content tonight with his team leading 51 to 25. Not sure what the delay is here, but whatever it was, it appears to have been worked out by the officials. So one free throw here for low with 27.6 seconds remaining in the half. And the free throw is up and good. Coach Fisher had one word for low when describing him and that was dynamic. Can really do it on both ends of the floor. Really showing what he can do on offense tonight. Now with 10 points. Shot clock is turned off so the Pirates will hold for the final possession. Looking for something good to happen heading into that locker room. There hasn't been much for, well, if there were fans here, there wouldn't be much for them to cheer for. Four seconds left. Dean underneath. No good, but he was fouled on the way up with 2.4 remaining in the half. They're going to charge that to low. His first seven team foul on the Tribe, so... Dean will head to the free throw line to shoot two. Dean, a pretty good free throw shooter, 71% on the season. Bends the knees and it's up, rattles home. So Matt, I'm gonna ask you to put on your coach's headset for a second here. I guess if you're Ed Joyner, there's really only one thing you can tell them and that's guard the three point line a little better. Yeah, guard the three point line and take care of the basketball. Some of the uh, turnovers early on spark this run for William and Mary so you want to just low to inbound 2.4 left Harvey back to low one second to go lets it fly and it's well short 
William and Mary with a dominant first half leads it 52 to 27. Eight three point makes, 72 percent from beyond the arc. Hampton though still with another half left to play, and we'll see what happens then. William and Mary leads it 52 27 on watch on the ESPN Plus and Sky Four. Find out. Actually, whose time is it? It's time to find out. TV 10 and the Fox 43 Sports Wrap. Joined alongside courtside by my good buddy Matt White. Matt, for the William & Mary Tribe, it was Quinn Blair leading all scorers with 13 points. Five for five, perfection from the field. And behind him, two players with 10 points, Yuri Covington and Luke Lowe, two dynamic guards, as head coach Dane Fisher put it. Eight of 11, the Tribe shot from three-point range as we are about to get the second half started here with the Tribe leading 52-27, to 27, looking for back-to-back -back wins. Coach Ed Joyner, Matt, what do you think he told his team at the locker room? If I'm Coach Joyner, I'm telling my guys, you know, put the first half behind you. We got to start from square one right here, and it's going to start on the defensive end, as you mentioned. The high three-point shooting of William & Mary is what built this lead, so you're not going to make any progress here if you allow that to continue, Nathan. Here's Lowe to Covington. The two dynamic guards looking to get things started for the try. Back out low, got caught in the corner, and it looked like his foot hit the out-of-bounds line. So there's a good way if you're the Hampton Pirates to get things started with a turnover. you got to take each possession one at a time, forcing a turnover there. Now to close the deal, you've got to take care of the ball on this end of the floor. Nathan doesn't necessarily have to be a three. You just want to get something going to the bucket and a good look at the basket. But they're going to go for three, and Shelton, not how you want to get started. Air mails it wide right, right, gives it right back to the William & Mary Tribe. 30 seconds gone by here in the second half. Pirates going to pick up full court pressure here, see if they can force some more turnovers. And you oh. saw Dickens read it, but he had just taken that step in and couldn't cut back in time, but was still able to deflect the ball out of bounds. Dickens got the scoring started for the Pirates, the first four points of the game, but really hasn't been much of a factor since then. Dickens, seven foot, has had a few blocks on the night as well, but it's really on the offensive end that the Pirates are really going to have to pick things up. Another Good start turnover. on the defensive end, a second straight turnover for the Tribe. Here comes Dean. Warren works the baseline, slams it, and the first points of the second half go to Hampton. Davion Warren, the Mr. Everything for the Pirates and for head coach Joyner, slams it home, trying to give the Pirates some energy before the second half got started, Matt. Took his guys into a huddle and tried to get them pumped up. Obviously, no crowd to try and pump them up, so they got to make it happen all on their own. Thornton Scott caught on the inside, back out low with 12 to shoot. Penetration, a little pump fake, maybe too much from the freshman Covington. Warren the steal, other end. Whistle, other end, and maybe he pushed off. Warren does not like the call. Some contact right under the basket, and that'll get the ball right back to the Tribe. Coach Joyner trying to argue his case, but usually, Matt, we know how these ones go. That was a really tough call for the Pirates. You take another look at it as yeah, that's good defense there by 
uh, or good effort there by Covington to try and get back on the play. But I thought I was a I was a really tough call, especially with the official not in position to see where the contact was generated from. But nonetheless, another turnover for Hampton gives the ball back to the Tribe as we're under the 1830 mark. More contact and another whistle. This time it's on Dean, and he doesn't like it either. Second foul for Dean. Already two quick fouls on the Pirates as William & Mary goes back to work. Covington, one of those two players with 10 points and another whistle and another foul. That is three straight whistles and two very quick fouls on Davion Warren. And Matt, if you're the Pirates, that is one player that you cannot have, that you cannot afford to have go back to the bench if you're going to try to make any attempt at a comeback here. Warren beside himself with that second foul, trying to get some kind of an explanation on what was the call. And he's going to have to go to the bench now with three fouls. Two in the last minute in change of that long. Inbounds will stay with William and Mary after the deflection. Warren, the team's go-to guy, averages 16 points a game, and he's going to go to the bench with only two points tonight. Both of them coming on that slam that we saw to start the second half scoring. 17 seconds on the shot clock for low, and now the whistles are starting to fly here in Hampton. Yeah, four quick fouls in less than two minutes of game time here. Pirates are going to have to adjust here. See a lot of frustration on the faces of these Pirates trying to play solid defense. Started the half with back-to-back -back turnovers, but now getting a little bit too chippy. But you know, Matt, that with how hot the William & Mary Tribe were in the first half, eight three-pointers, just blistering field goal percentage, you knew that Coach Joyner was going to tell his guys to get a little more physical. Almost blocked, but low finds his way to the paint and gets the deuce. Yeah, Dickens came over with the help. Good defense, better offense there for the Tribe. Dean drives and he'll draw contact. It looks like that'll go against Ben White. Those were Lowe's first points of the second half. He now has 12 as Dean will go back to the line. Third personal on Ben White, the redshirt freshman out of Columbus. Deuce Dean will return to the free throw line. Dean with six points in the first half. From York Prep High School in South Carolina, first free throw is up and all nylon. Dean now three, four, three from the, th uh, from the Chetty Stripe. Dean now the leading scorer for Hampton. Broke a three-way tie at six. He now has seven. Godwin and Dickens, the other two Pirates, with six points so far this evening. Coach Joyner looking for some offense. Second free throw goes. And this is where last season he would have been going to two of the top scorers in the country in Ben Stanley and Jermaine Merrow. Merrow, the program's all-time leading scorer Ben Stanley ended up transferring out of here after an emergent after really emerging last season underneath and it's Harvey with the slam Harvey has had a great game tonight Harvey now with seven points and that puts the try back up 25 Shelton right swing finds Dickens Dickens looks to work on the block 17 seconds Battle of Big Man had to pick up his dribble. Oliver Hampton got caught as well, and now the steal other end. Connor Kachera, bounce pass, low, no good. There was a whistle, and that will be, that, I think that was DeJour Dickens, Matt. I wasn't quite sure, couldn't hear it. No, that was Godwin. Godwin, that was Marquise Godwin with a foul. That's going to be his second 15 foul on the Pirates. Luke Lowe back to the free throw line here for William & Mary. One of one in his lone trip. Now the game's leading scorer. First free throw is off the side of the iron, no good. Lowe led the team with 24 points in that come from behind win over George Washington. There's Dane Fisher now in his second season as the head man for the Tribe. Earned the CAA Coach of the Year last year. 
as the Tribe won 21 games, although it was a disappointing end when they lost in the quarterfinal round of the CAA tournament. Expected to contend for that CAA title, but given the way how things worked out, Matt, maybe they're glad, I don't want to say they're glad, but maybe it worked out that they did not end up winning the tournament last year. The Tribe still one of only four original programs never to have made it to the NCAA tournament, so what a time that would have been, Matt, for the Tribe to have won it and then to have to find out the tournament got canceled, obviously because of COVID-19. That's right. Uh, foul here on the Tribe. It's going to be on Scott, his first, team second. Godwin finds Dean. Dean with some room, goes down low. Dickens, and I think we're going to get a hand check down low on Harvey. Yeah, both teams, Matt, getting a little more handsy in this second half. We didn't see a whole lot of whistles in the first half, but the whistles have been flying here in the second. We have eight combined fouls so far, and we're not even four minutes into this half. Long inbounds will come to Dean. Dean switched his hands. Nice floater with a left hand. Pirates continue with the full court press. And Dean is now the first Pirate to reach double figures with 10 points tonight. Approaching 16 minutes left to play. The Pirates with a lot of work to do and William and Mary has done pretty much whatever they've wanted to on offense. Kickball out of bounds. It will stay with the Tribe. There's coach Ed Joyner, one of the best in the history of the MEAC before they switched conferences to the Big South. And looked like Scott looking for the no look, not sure who he, who he was going for, maybe Harvey, but Harvey wasn't cutting, so it'll stay back with the Tribe. Scott with 13 to shoot, out to low. Eight seconds now, inside out, three pointer left, and short, that rebound was, controlled by Hampton. And that was Blair. Had the hot hand in the first half. Has not scored since the first half. 13 points for Blair. Back to Dean. Can he be the catalyst? Spins under the lane and gets it to go. Begging for an and one. Not going to get it, but he'll still get the bucket. 57-35. The Tribes still lead by 22. Still a lot of work if the Pirates want to get back into it. Back out Harvey. He's been a force on the defensive end as well. Good you hear from with Hampton. It. Oliver Hampton with the steal, but steps out of bounds after the steal. And that will bring us to our first media timeout of the second half. Still well in control. William and Mary leads at 57-35 here on ESPN+. Plus. takes you we have the selection value and strength to get you there hercules tires ride on our strength nathan epstein alongside matt white bringing you tonight's game between the home team hampton pirates looking to avoid back-to-back -back losses taking on their in-state rivals from Williamsburg, the William and Mary Tribe, who have had the hot hand all night long, leading at 57 to 35 here at the Hampton Convocation Center. Hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast, and nobody in the stands tonight, as has been the case pretty much all over the country with the pandemic still in effect. William and Mary, now with a whistle, there have been a lot of those as Yuri Covington took it right to the rack, but Offensive foul will give it right back to the Pirates. They need a lot more of that down by 22 with 15.09 left to play in the game. Foul charge to Harvey. It's his second, fourth team foul on the Tribe. Deuce Dean, shot blocked by Harvey. Big time rejection by the big sophomore. Almost sent it back to the bench for the Pirates. On the way, no good, and the rebound brought down by Godwin, but he stepped on the end line. So that will give the ball right back to the Tribe. Yeah, good effort there from the Pirates. Unfortunately, Godwin and Dickens look like they collided with each other. Yuri Covington to inbound it. 20 seconds on the shot clock and low. Will set things back up. Thought about the three, now gives it back to Covington. Underneath Harvey. 
had a big block looking for some offense, and now the favor paid right back to him. Dejour Dickens got his big paw up. Other end, Oliver Hampton tried to soar for the ball, but out of bounds will go right back to the Tribe. Yeah, Pirates, I understand, want to make the big play, but right now they need to take care of the basketball and get the best shot they can, trailing by this large of a deficit. Still time to make a run, but you've got to take care of the basketball. Covington will cross the timeline with 20 seconds, guarded by Bethea. Gets in the lane. Covington with a beautiful left-handed layup off the board and good. Great adjustment in midair to avoid Dickens. Covington now the third try player in double figures with 12 points. Godwin looking to get in on the action just inside the three-point line. Cans it. Seems to like that spot, Matt, just inside the three-point line. Yeah, eight points now for Godwin. Covington in the lane. Pirates fortunate not call for the foul there. There was contact on the drive. Dean in the lane, splits the defender, shot blocked again. And a foul on Oliver Hampton. Harvey has been a force for the Tribe. Yet another block, and that is four for the big man tonight. The nation's leader in block shots. Coach Fisher knew he had a good player with Nathan Knight. He might have another one in the making with Mikael Harvey, the sophomore forward from Ocean View High School. Under 14 to go. Covington will cross midcourt. Looks for the screen, nearly turns it over, but William and Mary will adjust here with 16 seconds down the lane. Low with 15 points, dishes it back out. And now it's Covington, long three off the side iron. There's Harvey with the offensive board, back out Kachera. They're going to say Kachera walked with it. I think that's a bit of a makeup call. Harvey could have been called for a travel, even though he was bobbling the ball but well Matt he actually might have been calling maybe a late travel on Harvey because I agree with you he got the rebound maybe slid those feet a little bit either way travel on somebody and they're giving it back better late to, than to, never to the as they say it's better late than better never make the right call late than never Nathan Epstein bringing this game to you alongside Matt White. Normally with Wavy TV 10, you can always catch the Fox 43 Sports Trap every night at 10.45. Dickens. Offensive board, Dickens wow. soared in. I thought he was going to try to jam it on the putback for a second. I think he thought that too. <laughs> and then Harvey picks up his third, so I believe he's picked up all three of his fouls here in the second half, so it'll be interesting to see if he comes off the floor, if will we'll change defensively for William and Merritt. He's made some big plays here. Denying the Pirates at the rim as Dickens almost got the roll. Free throw no good. Dickens stuck on six points, scored the game's first four points, both on layups. Shows he can shoot the ball as well, but it's been hard for him to get back on the board since. Has been very active on the defensive end tonight. Dickens with six rebounds. And he also has five blocked shots. So while he may not be all over the stat sheet offensively, he shows you what he can do. A very well-rounded player, Matt. Approaching 13 minutes left in this ball game as Thornton Scott will slow things down for the Tribe. Takes the screen, looking for the give and go, but Dejour Dickens right there with another steal. Might have been a double dribble, and yep, sure was. Yeah, he had trouble getting control of the ball, and Fisho right there on the spot to call the double dribble. Coach Ed Joyner trying to give his team some encouragement. Now in his 12th season as head man of the Pirates. And boy, has he done an exceptional job. The winningest coach in Hampton University history has taken the Pirates to three MEAC tournament titles back when the team was in the MEAC. Team advanced to the Big South title game last year. And here they are, good steal on defense. Davion Warren from three. Good line, a little short, out of bounds. It will go to the Tribe. Good hands there by Bethea Jr. Forces the turnover, but unfortunately the Pirates again get a turnover, but give the ball right back without cashing in. Quinn Blair there with 13 points, and the Tribe have had this thing well in hand. They took command on a 17-7 run early, 
but it's been the three-point shooting in the first half that put the Pirates in a 20-point hole. The Pirates have been trying to dig themselves out of it ever since. Eight three-pointers in the first half for the Tribe, who have since cooled off. You knew that was going to happen at some point. Here's Covington, nice spin in the lane. The left-handed layup, no, but that is Ben Wright. Slams it home on the putback. I thought the ball might have still been over the cylinder, but no call there, but a great effort there by Damian Warner checked in his own miss, and the second opportunity is good. Warren fighting for his own miss, gets the putback to go. Coach Joyner said Warren is really one of those players that can play four positions on the floor. Covington looked like he could have been called for a charge. Joyner trying to argue that case. You know he's not going to win that one. It's a little bit too touchy, a foul on the Pirates. And that will bring us to another media timeout. 21-point lead for the Tribe, 61-40 to here on ESPN+. Is where the rest of the journey begins. It's been a great night scoring for the William & Mary Tribe, and there's one of the reasons Yuri Covington, one of these sensational freshmen for head coach Dane Fisher, really has an ability to get inside the lane, has 12 points tonight, and here he is at the free throw line, the freshman from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, from the National Christian Academy, six foot one, looking to get back on the board, looking for number 13 on the night, can't get the friendly roll, but a whistle. We're going the other way. Hampton ball. A lot of youth on this team for head coach Dane Fisher of William and & Mary. And that is one of those players that he thinks could be really special here when it's all said and done. And that last was a foul on Ben White. That's his fourth. Ben Wright, the red shirt freshman. Redshirted last year, spent a lot of time in practice battling two of the best players in the country in Nathan Knight and Andy Van Vliet. And now it looks like it's paid off a little bit. Ball out of bounds going right back to the Tribe, and that is not what Coach Joyner wanted out of the timeout. You know, it looked like Oliver Hampton had trouble holding on to the pass. More full court pressure coming for the Pirates. Long pass comes near midcourt here to Harvey. And Harvey has been a force on the inside tonight. Harvey with four blocks. As the Pirates go, or excuse me, the Tribe go back to work. Underneath, Harvey missed the chippy, but it might have been partially blocked by Bethea. Davion Warren looking for the cutter. Can't find it. it Oliver Hampton manages to corral it. And Hampton can reset now with 19 to shoot. It's Godwin, guarded by Scott. 15 seconds for the Pirates. Dean has been the catalyst on offense so far in the second half, trying to get his Pirates pumped up. Oliver Hampton with a three-point look, no good. Foul on the floor, Davion Warren. It looked like he was held there by Blair. That's Blair's third, seventh team foul. So both teams are in the bonus. Yeah, the fouls starting to pile up in the second half. Again, the whistles were relatively quiet in the first half. Almost as quiet as this arena right now with no fans in the house. Warren connects on his first of two free throws. 71% free throw shooter. And that brings the margin back down to 20. Second free throw gets the friendly roll off the front of the iron. Six points now for Warren. Well, he comes away with the steal. Well below his average. Warren averages about 16 points every game. Did not score in the first half. All six of those points have come in the second half. Approaching the 10 minute mark. Three pointer, no good. Jake Milkwright looking for the long range. Here comes Dean, attacking Scott. Right handed, layup goes. Tough, tough move by Russell Deuce Dean. Did a right, uh, did a, made the right move. He drove right at Harvey, eliminating the shot blocker's ability to get to the ball. And the layup is up and good. Dean having a great night. He is leading the Pirates with 14 points.
William and Mary with a 30 second timeout. We'll be right back. That actually guides them down that road. Helping you reach your goals. That's Forever First. Welcome back to Hampton University. The home Pirates down 61 to 44. Looking for some answers offensively. They've managed to slow down the tribe a little bit. So far in the second half, it's been number one leading the charge for the Pirates. And you just saw there Russell Dean. They call him Deuce. He's leading the charge for the Pirates with 14 points. Huddled up his team at halftime, trying to get them fired up. This team trailed 52 to 27 at the half. Quinn Blair getting harassed by Oliver Hampton. And now a little bit too handsy. Raymond Bethea picks up the foul. That is the eighth team foul. And that is the first foul for Bethea. Back to the free throw line will be Covington. So far, he is 0 of 1. First free throw here on the 1 and 1 is short. Long yeah. rebound comes to the tribe. And there's a foul on the body. And more free throws here for William and Mary. And Matt, that's one of those things that if you're Ed Joyner, he is just shaking his head right now. That's got to drive you crazy. Offensive rebounds are one thing, but offensive rebounds during a free throw might be another as his team could use all of the offense it can try and muster now, and that is not going to help. Down 61 to 44. You're given a gift a little while ago with Yuri Covington, the freshman, missing a free throw, and now you're given another gift as Quinn Blair cannot connect. That is back-to-back -back misses for the Tribe, starting to cool off a little bit. Yeah, so far Hampton has outscored Aaron Mary 17 to 9 here in the second half. But like you said, you can't give them opportunities like this to get points at the free throw line. This time, Dickin secures the rebound after three straight misses from the stripe for the Tribe. Here comes Dean. Looks like it might have been off his knee, and it is. Mistake by Russell Dean. He has been the offensive catalyst for the Pirates in the second half, but a big mistake there by the sophomore. Full yeah, court pressure being applied. Blair has to jump for it. Ball on the deck. Looks like it's stolen away. Out of bounds. No call yet. Now they're going to say Tribe. Defensive intensity picking up for this Pirates unit. Not going down without a fight tonight. Not at all. 10-18 to go. Still a lot of time to play here, and Wayman Mary's had some trouble with this increased intensity here. They're going to throw it long in the low. And he'll look to set up the offense here with 20 seconds showing on the shot clock. 17-point lead for William & Mary. This Tribe team led by as many as 27 tonight. Kachera guarded well by Oliver Hampton. Now to Blair with eight to shoot. A lot of contact. No whistle. Oliver Hampton picks it up. I guess the refs say play on. Dean guarded by Kachera, stops just inside the free throw line, in and out, no good, and Harvey the rebound, maybe a frustration foul on Oliver Hampton. Yeah, that had to be a frustration foul there as Dean had a good look at the bucket, couldn't get it to go. Looked like Dickens was going to have a chance at an offensive put back, but ball deflected away right into the hands of the Tribe, and again, William & Mary at the free throw line here, 10th team foul on Hampton, so two free throws for the remainder of the ball game here for the Tribe. It's Harvey's first free throw, no good. That is now four straight misses at the free throw line. Substitutions coming for the Tribe. Thatcher Stone will check into the game. Doesn't see a whole lot of minutes. Has only played eight minutes in the last two games. Harvey, the leading rebounder in the game with eight, and that is now Five and counting missed free throws. If you are Dane Fisher, you're starting to pull your hair out a little bit because this Hampton team staying alive. Now under three, excuse me, 10 minutes left to play. Godwin pump fakes, throws it into Dickens, comes back to Hampton, 12 seconds. Oliver Hampton, free throw line jumper. It's an air ball out of bounds. And it goes back to William and Mary. You know, the tribe, while they haven't been making their free throws, haven't felt the sting of it here, Nathan, because the Pirates have not been able to find a way to put the ball in the bucket. Coach Joyner clapping his hands, trying to get his guys pumped up. Cochera will head to the bench for the Tribe. Into the game, Jake Milkbright. Thornton Scott receives it as Hampton will back off a little bit of playing 
full court pressure for a few minutes here, but might need a little bit of a rest. Full court pressure, when you're trying to play that intense, can take it out of you. They still need some time to play offense. Milk right, hands it off low. Low guarded by Bethea, takes the screen. A lot of contact, ball out of bounds. Thatcher Stone had it knocked away. They're gonna say it'll stay with the Tribe. Five seconds left to shoot. Dickens did a good job of just putting his hand straight up. Allowed the ball handler to come into him. Five seconds. Low in the corner. Four seconds left, low. Floater. Goodness, almost had it. There's Harvey, the offensive board in the putback. Harvey with his ninth rebound of the night. And Harvey with his ninth points of the night. And they were huge. 63 to 44, back to a 19 point lead for William and Mary. As we've been saying, Matt, William and Mary with some missed free throws has kept Hampton hanging around, but up until now, they haven't felt it. Ball on the deck, picked up by Bethea. In the corner, Godwin, pump fake. Long jumper goes, and that is a two. Foot was on the line. Godwin showing off the distance. Approaching the eight minute mark. Bounce pass underneath, back to low, no good. Ball on the deck, scooped up by Godwin. Pirates look to set up the offense here. Dean spins in the lane. Good defense there from William and Mary. And Travis is the call. Interesting call there. Very Matt, interesting as, uh, call. He didn't lot, have the ball, but. A lot of contact, yeah. but either way, it'll give the ball right back the other way. 63 to 47. William and Mary leads it here at Hampton University. You're watching college basketball on ESPN+. Plus. The tribe of William and Mary in control here at Hampton University, 63 to 47. Do the Hampton Pirates have enough time and enough offense to get back into this one? Nathan Epstein courtside alongside Matthew White. As the tribe back onto the floor, Matt, do you think uh, the tr do you think Hampton has enough time and enough offense? To answer your first question, enough time, yes. Enough offense, maybe. <laughs> uh, right now, <laughs> to Hampton, be determined. To be determined. Right now, Hampton has outscored the Tribe 19 to 11. They've done a good job of keeping the Tribe from uh, adding to their total, but they've let a lot of precious time slip away and not uh, scoring themselves. So, let's see what we do here in these final seven and a half minutes. Pirates are going to have to continue to lock in here defensively. Tribe have only scored two points since the last media timeout. Low, outside. Underneath, a nice little step by, that is Thatcher Stone. Nice layup and the foul. The six foot six sophomore doesn't get a whole lot of playing time, only averages eight minutes through the first two games. Four and a half points a game. Yeah. But here he is with a chance at a three point play and it is a big one trying to extend that lead back to 20 for William and Mary, looking for back to back wins and a two and one start to their season. And again, there is some kind of odd stuff going on to that free throw line as the Tribe have now missed on their last six straight free throws. Dean looking to create, Oliver Hampton looking inside for Dickens. And after that bucket, Stone playing some excellent defense. Underneath, Ol Oliver Hampton went up with it. I thought they were gonna call a jump ball for a second, but the travel is, a, is the call. Yeah, that was a tough call there. I expected a jump ball as well, but officials, I guess, felt that there wasn't a blocked shot there, so he travel against Oliver Hampton, gives the ball back to William and Mary. Under seven minutes left to play in Hampton. William and Mary in control by 19. Harvey with the ball has been a huge factor in this one. Not much on the offensive side for Harvey, only nine points, but he has been all over the place with four blocks and leads the way with nine rebounds. Five seconds to shoot for the Tribe. Lowe has to create. Back outside, it's 
Scott for three, well short. No good, it'll give the ball back to Hampton University. 6.33 to go. Godwin set to inbound here for Hampton. Again, the Pirates have found their off, have found a better offensive groove here in the second half, led by this young man in Deuce Dean, who gets the lay in the fall. But outside of Dean, they've had little else to really hang their hat on here, Nathan. Dean now with, I believe, 16 points on the night. And now it's Yuri Covington. Almost walked with it, had the ball knocked away. DeJour Dickens, Oliver Hampton with it. Back outside to Dean, and Dean has been trying to create all night. Davion Warren, a very quiet night for the team's leading scorer. Averages 16 points. Here's Dickens, cans that one from the baseline. DeJour Dickens, a big man that has a little bit of range as well. Lead down to 15, just under six minutes to go. Pirates trying to put some pressure on the Tribe here. And we'll see how this young team for William & Mary responds. They have a very comfortable lead, up by 15, but playing with a lot of youth. Luke Lowe has been the calming presence for most of the first two games, especially at George Washington. And here he is, locks in for three, right on cue. Lowe connects from long range. Yeah, I believe that's the first made three here, the second half for the Tribe. Had eight in the first half. That makes their ninth made three. Low now with 18 points. Ball knocked out of bounds, but it'll stay with Hampton. 5.08 left in this one. 18 point lead for William and Mary. Blair and White will check in, as well as I believe that's number 23, Kachara. Connor Kachara. Kachara, the they replace Harvey, and it looks like Stone. Oliver Hampton, short on his three-point shot, out of bounds, belongs to the Tribe. Dejour Dickens knocked it out of bounds. Luke Lowe, the leading scorer for the Tribe, four of five from beyond the arc, has 18 points to lead all scorers. And the other half of that dynamic duo at guard, now with the ball in his hands, Yuri Covington. Crosses over Godwin out to the corner, underneath Blair. Blair caught in a double team, has to get it back outside to Lowe. Lowe just connected on a three to make it an 18 point game again. Whistle and a foul. And it looks, and it looks like that will be on Deuce Dean, his fourth foul, team's 10th. So it is two free throws the rest of the way here, Matt. Yeah, this will be another opportunity for William Mary here to cut into what has been a six free throw stretch of misses. And they do just that. I don't know if you heard it earlier when I said that Lowe being from Wisconsin is a huge Green Bay Packers fan. His head coach being from Minnesota is a huge Vikings fan. So the two exchanged some, shall we say, friendly banter at practice every now and then. And I asked Coach Fisher, what are you going to do if the Packers, who, by the way, in the NFL have for now taken over the one spot in the NFC playoffs, what are you going to do if they make a deep run? He said, if we win, I don't care. <laughs> Here comes Davion Warren underneath. Strong take to the bucket and one. Davion Warren, quiet night for the team's leading scorer, averages 16 points. But tonight Warren only has played, played 16 minutes tonight. Personal was charged with Ben White. Only eight points for Warren tonight and that I believe that was five. Might be the last one, and it is for White. So a three-point opportunity here for Warren. Free throw is short. Controlled by William & Mary. Been a tough night for Warren and a tough night for this Hampton Pirates team. Lost on the road at VMI. Had some games canceled. They've had to be as flexible as anybody else in the country having to deal with cancellations, postponements, COVID restrictions, the whole deal. William & Mary looking for back-to-back -back wins after taking a 16-day off period because of COVID-19. Harvey had the rebound in his hands, but 
had somebody. I can't tell who it is yet. That is that Warren. Warren, who was jumped on his back essentially. And I believe that is his fifth. Yeah, that's what I thought. That was his fifth. So Davion Warren will be disqualified for the remainder of the game. Looks like Bethea will replace him as it takes us to the media timeout, Nathan. 70-52, William and Mary on their way to back-to-back -to -back wins. We'll be right back after this. Find out. Under four minutes left to go at Hampton, and this has been your difference in the ball game. The three-point shot, William and Mary was cooking in the first half. Eight three-pointers, four of them from that man right there, Luke Lowe. At one point, the Tribe shot 87% from three-point range. Now, they have since cooled off to, oh, I don't know, a meager 56% from beyond the arc. But that has pretty much been the difference in the ball game as the second free throw from... Mikael Harvey is no good, made one of two. A 19-point edge for William & Mary on their way to back-to-back -back wins after rallying to beat George Washington in D.C. on Monday. 3.45 left, Godwin, and that is something we've also seen a lot of in the second half are a number of whistles. And that foul will be on Connor Kachera. His first team's eighth, so... I believe Godwin will be at the free throw line here for the Pirates. Pirates 7 of 12 from the free throw line. William and Mary surprisingly 14 of 25. Godwin misses the free throw. And that's something that I'm sure frustrates a guy like Godwin, a very confident shooter. 0 for 3, excuse me, 0 for 4 from the free throw line tonight. Corner three is up, and it's good for the Tribe. And the beat goes on for the Tribe. Tenth made three-point shot. Now 10 of 17 for William and Mary. Deuce Dean shot blocked. Rebound to the Tribe. Transition opportunity here for Scott. 74-52, William and Mary assuming things hold and assuming we do not see a rally for the ages by the Hampton Pirates here over the last three minutes and two seconds. Quinn Blair bounce pass underneath Harvey, and he has his shot rejected. A little bit of frustration there from Edward Oliver Hampton. William and Mary assuming things stay the way they are. We'll move to two and one of the season. Hampton, meanwhile, after that season opening win at George Washington, the only common opponent between these two teams will fall to one and three. Pirates will be on the road on Friday, taking on their longtime rival Howard, that game in the nation's capital, set for a 5 p.m. tip-off. I believe that game will be broadcast here on ESPN Plus. And for the Tribe, their next game coming up will be against our fellow Big South member uh, here in High Point. That game will be in Williamsburg. So, a little Big South flavor for the Tribe here in their next, in their this game and the next. Quinn Blair hit the deck hard. Another foul for the Pirates, and that will send Quinn Blair back to the free throw line. William and Mary picked to finish last in the CAA, but they have shown some potential, have a very young team. Luke Lowe, the senior guard, has been a calming presence, scored 24 points, including the game winner on the road at George Washington. I asked Coach Fisher right there, what does he expect from this young team moving forward? And all he said was, to maximize the talent that they have. They don't put a number on it. They don't put any expectations of postseason tournament play. They just want to maximize what they have. But he believes in this team, and he believes that if they can find some chemistry and if they can bring it all together, that this team can be a contender. Maybe not this year, but certainly they have the pieces. You've seen Mikael Harvey, a strong presence on the inside. Luke Lowe, the senior guard. Four three-pointers on the night for Lowe. And for Hampton, the same deal. They're learning how to play without two of the leading scorers in school history in Jermaine Merrow and Ben Stanley. Ben yeah. Stanley, Jermaine Merrow, the leading all-time scorer in school history, broke that record last year. The team advanced all the way to the Big South Tournament Championship game, fell just short in that one. 
And here they are just trying to find their way, as most teams this year, in an unprecedented time. Godwin right to the rack. But Ed Joyner, we know, Matt, he's one of the best. Three-time MEAC tournament champion. He'll be a contender in the Big South once he gets this team rolling. 12 seasons now at the helm for the Pirates. And had COVID not shut down the postseason, Matt, last season would have been his eighth, post his eighth straight postseason appearance. Godwin corralled the loose change, couldn't get the layup to fall. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Joyner, as you said, three MEAC tournament championships. Had a regular season championship the last season in that conference, which uh, qualified the Pirates for the the uh, Pirates' loan NIT bid in program history. So, again, uh, postseason is expected here at Hampton with this program. And, again, as you said, because of the way last season ended for not just Hampton but the entire country, yeah. uh, an opportunity uh, lost for uh, college athletes across the country. But... An opportunity here. Pirates were preseason picked ninth in the Big South to try and surprise some teams and, uh, you know, rebuild, reload on the fly as this team has shown some flashes of talent. But as we said before, just because of the impact of the pandemic, they just need some time to really gel. So this is a team we really want to keep our eye on as the season progresses. There's ups and there's downs to playing in a one-bid league, but Coach Joyner said the one good thing is it really doesn't matter what happens in the regular season. As long as you have your guys right heading into the Big South Tournament, every player, every team, every coach has a chance. Coming up on the final seconds here in this game, we're at 70 on the spot with that turnover. And William and Mary, as you said, heading on to face High Point. And then we'll get that rematch, or really it's the first matchup this season with UVA. It should have been on Sunday. Cavaliers have had a lot of uh, COVID problems. They had their game with William and Mary scrapped, and they had their Big Ten matchup with Michigan State. Everybody was anticipating that one postponed, and, and now it looks like their Saturday matchup against Villanova might be postponed as well. Russell Dean, they call him Deuce, gets the Deuce as... We are now into the final minute of this one, 75-56. It was a hot shooting night for William & Mary on the inside, maybe one too many steps for Yuri Covington, the freshman. William & Mary found the range from beyond the three-point line and never looked back. 10 three-pointers on the night for William & Mary. And really, Matt, 42% shooting from the field for Hampton. Not all that bad, but only 14% shooting from beyond the arc. You've said it a couple of times. That has been the difference in your ball game. That's right. Uh, to wrap up your point on William and Mary, surprising to say at this point in December, their home opener will be their game against High Point. So there you go. Again, everyone has to be flexible here in this uh, pandemic that we are hopefully nearing the uh, end of here as – we have a foul called on Hampton, but nonetheless, uh, you know, a lot of uh, fluidity, if you will, for all of these teams, and not just these two, but all the teams around the country. So, again, home opener for William and Mary here in a few days as they will play host to High Point, and the Pirates will be headed to the nation's capital to take on their longtime rival in Howard that game on the 18th. At the line, Rainers Hermanovsky seeing his first action of the season. Sophomore guard from Latvia. It's always nice when you get a chance to show what you can do in those moments at the end of a game. Now down to the last 13 seconds and all for pride at this point as Deuce gets to the bucket. Final 10 ticks. William and Mary will improve to two and one. Hampton University falls to one and three. Final five seconds here at the Hampton University Convocation Center as William & Mary gets the win, 75-58, to 58, their fourth straight win over the Pirates. Again, because of COVID-19, no handshakes, everybody giving a wave, and this one is in the books. Davion Warren provided maybe the only offensive highlight for the Pirates for the Tribe, the big man, Mikel Harvey, led the way on the inside on rebounds, and from the outside, Marquise Godwin, Found the stroke once or twice, but in the end, not enough offense for the Pirates and too many three-pointers for the William & Mary Tribe. 
Luke Lowe is your leading scorer, reached 20 points. Russell Dean, your leading scorer for the Pirates, scored 18 points. Quinn Blair, 14. Marcus Scott, Marquise Godwin, 12. Yuri Covington with 12 for the Tribe. DeJour Dickens scored the first four points of the game for the Pirates with 11. Mikael Harvey, 10 points, four block shots, and 11 rebounds. I guess he would be your candidate for player of the game. That about does it here from the Hampton University Convocation Center. I want to thank everybody who made this broadcast possible. 75 to 58. I'm for Matthew White.